Life. Thank you for coming on. My pleasure. I'm excited to be here. Uh, so how have you been anyway? So how's your day been? What have you been doing? Good. It's a Sunday. It's around like one o'clock. I'm in New York. So it's just been, you know, a typical Sunday, workout, church, laundry, <laughs> relaxing. Same I don't know if that's stuff. typical for most people. For me, that's pretty typical. <laughs> trying not to do work, but when you're a hard worker, it's kind of hard to turn that brain off, but I'm trying. No, that's so cool. <laughs> so for those um, that obviously don't know who you are and sort of what you're about, introduce yourself to anyone that's watching. Yeah, my name's Tony Marinucci, and I'm a registered dietitian. I'm a business owner of an online nutrition counseling company where I help people to find the best fit diet for them on an individual level. And it's really just more about listening to what my clients are currently eating and making modification, modifications off of that based off of their goals. So I really believe in individualized care when it comes to nutrition. Okay. And uh, what's the difference between sort of a registered dietitian and a nutritionist because a lot of people kind of well for me I don't necessarily know the difference and maybe people might see mm -hmm. it as sort of the same thing falling into the same bracket right that's a great question and I'm not sure if it's different for you know you're in the UK right mm -hmm. yeah so like I'm not sure if it's different in the UK but in the United States pretty much anyone can call themselves a nutritionist it's not a protected title so if you read a book about nutrition or say you had your own weight loss journey and you decided to tell people how to lose weight and called yourself a nutritionist legally you're completely able to do that but you know just because you yes you might have had success but i don't believe that your own personal success is the only determining factor to being able to help someone whereas a registered dietitian we're credentialed nutrition professionals and I went to school for, you have to go to school for a minimum of five years to obtain your registered dietitian um, degree. You even have, you have, there's a whole test involved. So you, you're learning a lot, a lot <laughs> about the science of nutrition. And it's a five-year program that you have to do. And then now they actually require you that you get a master. So I have my master's in nutrition and dietetics as well. But it's definitely a more structured way of, learning and I think you're going to get more credible answers if you seek out a registered dietitian versus a quote-unquote nutritionist. Yeah I mean over here in the UK um, it's kind of similar really you have people that will sell supplements like herbal mm -hmm. life or something and then say <laughs> yeah we're nutritionists we can <laughs> take it like do this program for you or um, I mean mm -hmm. they, they even now have started to push into um, sort of that personal training industry as well where they're running like boot camps and fitness camps with no qualifications at all and mm -hmm. like for myself personally I've spent money on becoming qualified and I'm like well, I may as well I'm not bothered like I may as well just have kind of trotted down to my local park and gone yeah come work out I know what I'm doing you know mm -hmm. so yeah obviously in the UK we do we do have that problem as well and I think that's where the line needs to be drawn you know because obviously it's you can potentially cause someone harm you know whether that's through nutrition just claiming you're a nutritionist and mm -hmm. having sort of no qualification to back it up could you know yeah. potentially you could be feeding something something uh, someone something that may have a negative impact on their body because you don't know what you're on about i mean i like to think that people are quite savvy on what to eat but when you start to have conversations with people, you kind of realize uh, not so much. You know? <laughs> you know, they're like, oh, yeah, I had like, you know, two cans of Coke today and a pack of Doritos. But I ate chicken and had some lettuce. So, yay. <laughs> and you're like, oh, OK, like, right, let's let's get the ball rolling. So, no, we, we do have that problem over here. And hats off to you for taking the time out to go and get a qualification. Uh, yeah, luckily I knew I wanted it at a young age. You know, yeah. I actually struggled personally with being overweight. I grew up overweight a um, majority of my life, got made fun of, didn't, you know, never really had any sort of, I had a lot of girlfriends, but when it came to like guys and stuff, my self-esteem was very low and I realized that when I started like my weight loss journey that everything that I learned was helping to shape me into being able to now not just help people because I have the personal story, but now that I 
decided to go to school to become a registered dietitian, I have a wealth of knowledge. It's the combination of those two that I think can really help a person. Hmm. Yeah, as well as um, your own passion, I guess, for it as well, because obviously if you're going to invest your time and money into something, and obviously five years is a lot of time, you've got to kind of be passionate about it. And then you're also starting where you've got your your business going and things like that and you're helping people so i think Mm -hmm. it's a good good component to have is have that balance and a lot of people out there ain't necessarily passionate about what they do they just want to make the money do you know what i mean by selling some uh fad diet or or supplements or whatever Mm -hmm. Um, what's your opinion on sort of like what's the truth behind like fad diets and and cleanses in in your opinion a lot of times it's just putting a band-aid on the bigger issue. A lot of people will seek those quick fixes or a cleanse. Cleanses are, are to me, somewhat absolute, like, in the nicest way of saying it, ridiculous because <laughs> we have our, our skin, our liver, our kidneys, like we have organs that detoxify our bodies regularly. The mm. best way to aid in the detoxification process is just generally like eating more fruits and vegetables and whole grains and lean proteins and just eating healthy on a regular consistent basis will help you to naturally quote unquote detoxify your body. But so taking a, doing a cleanse or trying to do a detox or something to kind of start fresh and start over, people do it for a number of different reasons. If you're doing it to lose weight, you'll lose weight initially, but until you change your eating habits, the weight won't stay off. You know, Mm -hmm. if you're doing it to get healthy, you're going to be healthy for those three or four days. And really, you're not actually learning how to eat in the long run. So a lot of times they're just the term fad, like I think of fad diet as temporary. And they're just temporary. And that's what they are. And we can't expect to have success with anything in life if we're only doing it for a short period of time. It's like, it's like working really, really hard to make all of this money. And then if you just stop working, and then you live life and spend the money, you're, you, you're back at, eventually you're going to go back to square zero. So you could take a, do a fad diet or a cleanse and may, lose all this weight or be super healthy. But the second you stop, it's just eventually going to come back on. And a lot of times, especially with weight loss, not only do you lose the weight and gain it back, you gain back more than the original Amazing. weight that you started at. Yeah. I mean, I think, um, well, I know through sort of clientele I've had over here that, if they don't change the way they think about food and you know with like the emotional eating and stuff like that they'll have this quick fix because they want to see results fast you know they want to take these cleanses and fad diets or whatever they have this rapid crash and it's not sustainable and then Mm -hmm. they go back to their original diet because either they can't afford the products anymore or they've seen those results and now they're just like oh, I, can, I don't need that anymore and what they find is because they haven't made the necessary lifestyle changes and mental changes to the way they associate themselves with food they again like what you said just kind of find themselves going back up so it's a vicious mm. cycle really there's there's like to, to anything there's no get rich quick schemes Mm-hmm. you know it's mm-hmm. usually it's usually a scam like if it's if it's too good to be true you know and it's the same with um food and eating and all these sort of cleanses and diets and that if they really worked over a long period of time the companies would more than likely not be earning that much money because people wouldn't mm-hmm. need to keep going back mm-hmm. but if someone wants to you know i'm not necessarily i, I don't take any uh supplements or anything like that but I guess if someone wants to get in a wedding dress in four weeks time and they think that's the way that they want to go about it then so be it but I think they need to understand that that's a temporary thing it's not yeah. sustainable for a long period of time um so yeah yeah I, I kind of agree I agree with you totally on the whole sense of the mentality towards it and the way that they are just fads and kind of a money-making scheme really Usually, usually, Mm. and if they don't stick to it, it's eventually going to stop working. So So they need to find something that's long term and sustainable. Yeah. What's the sort of benefits from like changing your life to a sort of healthier lifestyle? What sort of benefits could say someone see from that? I mean, it sounds obvious, but (laughs) so many, it sounds obvious, but I don't think people really get it. I really don't think that they do, but 
um, just I, I strongly believe that healthy eating and exercising regularly and just embracing the healthy lifestyle is the best way to tell yourself, like, I love you. Like, I think it's like a self-care. I think it's almost imperative for us to take care of ourselves in that way. And then when you're taking care of yourself, then you can truly give to other people. You know, so often people like give all of them and there's nothing of them left at the end and they put themselves second. And by doing that, they're just stretching themselves so thin and they're never really fully going to be to be their own go to rise to their own potential. And the, even though their intention is to give to people and to be there for them, they're not really giving them all of them. Like it's that saying, like, fill your cup first. Mm. Like, that's what I truly believe. And I think healthy eating and exercising regularly, you start to feel so much better about yourself because, one, you're taking care of yourself. Two, nutrition is linked to, you know, just overall better mental health. Exercising just makes you happier. You feel more confident. If you're, you know, one thing exercise helps you do is sleep better, right? So if you're sleeping better, your mood is better, the way you approach your day, your job, your life, like everything is just improved because it's not saying that, you know, you're never going to have problems or conflict, but it's so much easier to deal with those problems and conflict when you feel more secure about yourself and you're happy with yourself and proud of yourself and knowing that at least, you know, if everything else goes to crap, at least I got my body to depend on, <laughs> you know, at least I got my physical body and my mental health because I do think it's all correlated. Mm. I think um, with that comes the only uh complication in my opinion when i've tried to get people to change into sort of a more beneficial healthy lifestyle is that they think these results and whether it's mentally physically is like instant so they're like yeah. oh well i do one training session and i'm gonna feel instantly better and my confidence is gonna be sky high and again yeah. it's kind of what we was touching on before is like it's a long-term thing it's it's a marathon, not a sprint. You know, your goals are going to take time, but make sure they're, you know, fairly achievable and give yourself a pat on the back when you get there, as well as all the, um, you know, psychological chemicals that are produced just from, from exercising as well. You know, uh, yeah. I think there's a lot of studies going around saying how exercise can be good for like anxiety and depression. And, yeah, 100%. You know, it's, uh, mm -hmm you know stimulates you and obviously with the helping with the sleep obviously lack of sleep causes anxiety and depression so you kind of counteract it by going and exercising it's a cycle mm. it's a cycle like you said earlier when you go into some of like the fad diets or the crash diets and stuff you're just playing in that cycle but the same thing you can use that cycle to benefit you mm. the healthier you eat the the, not even more that you exercise, but the more consistently you eat health. I'm not even saying you have to have a perfect diet and you don't have to like work out every single day and be perfect with your workouts. But the consistency of the two, the longer that you're committed to eating a little better and exercising a little bit more consistently, then you'll you'll break that cycle. It's a lot of a lot of the times, you know, everyone kind of not everyone, I can't assume, but most people know what to eat. It's just how do I stick to it and mm. how do I stick to healthy eating? It all comes down to our habits, our behaviors, the things that we do on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think the biggest mistake people make is they try to U-Haul their diet overnight and they try to, you know, if they've never worked out a day in their life and now they decide to go exercise, they try to exercise five days a week. It's like they've never eaten vegetables and now they're trying to eat vegetables with every meal and they are drinking soda and they go straight to water. Like these are all good state changes and good steps, but it's really difficult to go from zero to a hundred and anticipate to be able to, to, to sustain that, mm. you know? So that's kind of the biggest thing. I think people think that they can just change overnight, but it's, it's definitely, like you said, it's not, it's a journey, you yeah. know? Yeah. It's a, it's a lifestyle, you know, that's why they call it lifestyle. Like it's, a way of mm -hmm. life you know and i think i mean there's some people out there they're content and happy to be overweight and not exercising and whatever hats off to them you know whatever if they want to choose that that path mm -hmm. but for the majority of people i'd say I, and you know to be honest and i i probably will get like some backlash for this but i really really truly believe that by not and you don't have to be a perfect site where it's perfect technically have the perfect BMI and 
you know, it doesn't have to be like that. But if you're not taking any action toward your health or your exercise regimen, then you're not really living to your potential. So although you can be happy being overweight and not exercising and not eating healthy, I do think you can be happy, but I don't think you're going to be your happiest self. I don't think that you're truly living out, you know, what we're put on this earth to do, which is to serve others and be just our absolute best selves. So no, I get you. So there's yeah. there's a state of happiness, but you could be happier basically <laughs> it's like pretty much, yeah, yeah that's yeah. pretty much what i'm saying and i yeah. i mean i can't put myself into that mindset um and maybe i'll get hated on a little bit for this but it's like if you're a big big person and mm -hmm. you're overweight it's hard for me to see how you can look in the mirror and have such confidence and whatever and i mean there are people that do there are there are and it takes a lot of work i think mm. it takes a, a lot of work to get to that point um so like what i think of with with people is like everyone's different but I've always changed the way that I ate and the why I'm consistent with exercise the reason why I committed to a healthy lifestyle is because it wasn't a yes I did have a lot of insecurities looking in the mirror you know being being overweight most of my life and being made fun of for it and you know I, I thought I was confident but when people are constantly putting you down you lose that self-confidence mm -hmm. and it's definitely something that I struggled with but putting that aside what really helped me to stay committed to healthy eating and exercise was how it made me feel better. Like, forget about looking in the mirror. I genuinely, like, when I ate high sugary, high fatty foods, I felt sluggish and tired and full and bloated and uncomfortable, you know? And when I didn't exercise, I could still, I was, you know, I got good grades in school, but when I would exercise, my focus was, like, so much better. It was just, like... I was tired of not feeling like wonderful and great all the time. I felt like I was more feeling just like I could be doing better. Yeah. I mean, it kind of seems like um, we can kind of touch on like your views on maybe emotional eating and how to sort of avoid it. Because I think when yeah. you're in that, when you put yourself in that position, you can also think, do you know what? Like, fuck it. Like I'm being bully because of my size I, i'm just fu who cares i'm eating this fucking pizza everyone mm -hmm. views me this way anyway so whatever how would you, mm -hmm. what sort of tips would you give or how would you say people can get over that emotional eating is a learned behavior so just like any breaking any other habit or behavior it takes mental awareness and and intention to change mm. so there's usually triggers with emotional eating a lot of my clients find that their triggers might be at nighttime when like the kids are finally sleeping and all of a sudden they're reflecting on their day. They're not happy the way that it went and they're going, you know, to the refrigerator back and forth and back and forth. So that might be a trigger. It could be your environment. It could be, you know, maybe a relationship that you're in and that person says the wrong thing to you and automatically your automatic reaction is a learned behavior that then you go to, you know, hit up all the fast food restaurants and kind of escape that way. Mm. For, for those who struggle with emotional eating, this is how I kind of help them see why they need to consciously make an effort to break that cycle. So number one is we want to be, we want to be almost, um, like I'm not saying, how do I put this? We want to be aware that the reason why they're doing it is because when we eat food, we're in the moment. It's like a drug in the sense that we can easily forget about our problems. So it's a way for them to avoid the actual issue, right? If you think about when you go to food, you're so excited about what it tastes like, what it, that you're thinking about nothing else. It like takes you out. It's like a zone and it's, it is better than doing drugs and it's better than drinking alcohol, you know, but it is slightly kind of like your drug of choice of to kind of zone out. So we have to recognize that, that you're utilizing it as um, a crutch almost. And, but then second to that, you said something earlier that was really important. You said that people think I'm, you know, big or fat or, or overweight already, I may as well go and eat the pizza. Well, by doing that, who wins? You know, like, are you really going to let other people take that power over you when in actuality, you are in control of who you are and you have to, the third thing is I tell people is tough love is 
as an adult, we have to take ownership of our decisions and our choices. And until you can recognize that nobody's making you do anything other than you, if you're the driver of your emotions, then that's when you're actually going to be able to change. So recognize the feeling, take notice of what's happening and why, but then change your reaction to it. I think that's uh, a good key point there is a lot of people will use it as a a form of escapism in the sense of just like um you know same as drugs drinking alcohol and so on it's it's that kind of just i don't want to deal with this so i'm just going to go for this instead and and kind of that that um headlights on what one lane focus rather than thinking maybe long term that they're they're not thinking yeah they're exactly right it's it's an immediate satisfaction immediate gratification Mm. like very few things in in this world give us immediate gratification you know to be honest drinking usually like if you're choosing to drink alcohol to deal with your emotions like that takes time before you finally feel it right food it's like right there and because we're in a world you know a very fortunate and developed country where it's easily accessible for most people to just you know eat eat and eat it's like the easiest drug. It's the most accessible drug. And we need to eat to live. So it's not like we can just like, oh, I'm just not going to eat anymore because that's not going to work yeah. either. <laughs> Too many, um, I think like it's human nature, maybe, I don't know. But from a lot of people I've spoke to, it's kind of, we're always trying to look for that quick fix, um, mm-hmm. you know, for, uh, for the uh, for the long-term problem, you know, and really we need to kind of, like you said, be held accountable and take action on our shit rather than you know being sugar-coated and just kind of going oh yeah but i'll take this for now and worry about tomorrow tomorrow and sometimes you've got a and and that's not really like living too much it's kind of you're always living in a fear or or escape or whatever and when you start taking control of your life through exercise fitness eating things start working properly for you do you know what i mean you see a lot clearer you're more focused your outlook on life is a lot better um you know relationships can blossom loads of things can happen and so i think you know we need to people need to learn to um you know stop emotionally eating or whatever it may be you know stop it and it's a practice like you're not there no one's gonna be like with my clients i work with them for like a a minimum of six months because we're working on changing your behaviors i'm not just giving them a diet plan and just telling them don't don't eat out of emotion it's it's not that easy you know so i will say that for those people who are listening or watching and they do struggle with emotional eating it's not going to be something that you're going to fix overnight. It takes time, like any habit, any behavior, but it is so worth it in the long run because that battle that you fight every day, you'll be so free from that. Like think about everything that you could accomplish if you weren't solely focused on food all day long. Hmm. You know, like food for me used to be like all I thought about. It was literally everything. But now that I like, you know, eating for me, eating healthy, it's just the way that I eat. It's, it's natural for me. My brain has all this free space now to to invest in my business or to make, you know, be on podcasts and connect with other people and just like live life. Yeah. You know, it's no yeah. longer that battle in my head, you know, holding me back from living up to my potential. That's a good point as well, because obviously people don't always think of the brain, you know, as a muscle that can be trained, basically. And it, it totally can be trained. Yeah. So just by changing the way we associate food with ourselves with the emotional eating etc etc and you know understanding that mistakes may be made or whatever but just to keep kind of plodding through um eventually it will become habit it's the same with like meditation and and other things you know you've got a your first meditation for me like my first meditation was fucking abysmal you know i'm like yeah. sitting there i'm trying not to fidget i've got itchy nose like everyone paints <laughs> it out as this some like peaceful thing you, like think it's like four thousand minutes and it's only been one <laughs> yeah. and you've got all these things going on in your head and you're trying not to focus on any of it and it's quite yeah. hard but now like i can sit down and meditate and it's just a vacation for the brain and people always ask me oh why, why do you meditate and i'm like it's just a vacation for my brain it's just relaxation so i'd recommend it to anyone but that's on on a different tangent (laughs) well 
no, just on that Go. note, do you have the Headspace app by any chance? Yeah, it did. Um, Cause you sound like the guy that I, that, I, that talks to me in the morning when I'm meditating. <laughs> it's very, it's very calming. Oh, fine. You have a very gentle spirit. I oh, appreciate that. Yeah, it's very, very sweet. So yeah, I didn't think awesome. I sounded like him. Maybe I need to compare the two, like put the Headspace on and put my own it voice just, on. The block. Well, even when you just said Headspace, that was I'm like, oh my god, am I time? It's time for me to meditate. <laughs> Um, um, yeah, but it could just be the accent. I'm just like... <laughs> maybe, maybe. Um, so anyways, with your um, clientele, do any of them sort of have any... make any mistakes when they're uh, sort of moving on to eating healthy or, and starting to oh, eat healthy? Yeah. What mistakes are made by them? All the time. And, it, you know, it's it's normal. And I try to kind of let... I'm kind of guiding them on their journey. I don't want to implement, influence them too much. Um, I kind of let them make their mistakes so that way we can learn from it and grow from it. Um, but everything from perfectly eating Monday through Friday and completely blowing it on the weekends to having the mindset, and you mentioned it earlier about that relationship with food that, you know, if I eat less, I'll lose weight or, you know, foods that like, I can't eat any cookies because one cookie means I'll gain weight right away. Like, so it's just the kind of that all or nothing mindset is probably the biggest mistake people make. And through counseling them, I can't expect them to fully understand until we've worked together. Uh, like probably it takes usually about three weeks or so and everyone's different. But for them to really understand that, listen, that all, ex all or nothing mentality is only going to get you so far. Mm -hmm. So your progress might not be as quick. It might be a little bit slower but you're saving so much time in the long run, you know? Yeah. So I think the big, one of the biggest things I think they think is that, that all or nothing mindset. Yeah. Cause know? it's, again, it's, it's not sustainable. You know, we, no. we've got to have, if, you've got to have like a, a balance. And I think that's kind of the whole key to, to life in the sense of things is to have a bit of everything, you know, to have social times with your friends where you can have a glass of wine and yeah. go to the gym the next day and have that donut if you want it or whatever, but to not take the piss basically and be eating negatively and getting drunk every weekend and binging right. and whatever. It's about kind of just being more aware of the choices you're making and not going OTT. And I think, yeah, it balance is like the key word that I, that I try to get my clients to understand is balance is everything in life. And the way that we eat is, I think, just a reflection of how we live our lives. Mm. I mean, yeah, I was, that's, I think the hard part is because people don't see those results in six weeks, eight weeks, 10 weeks, 12 weeks, because they're living a balanced life. So the weight is going to slowly drop off. Their lifestyle yeah. is going to slowly change. You know, it's all a slow process. Mm -hmm. It's quite easy for people to go, this is bullshit you know whatever like i'm going back to the old stuff like what's the point you know and, and quit yeah. so i guess that's sort of another form of mistake and you have to i guess with yourself like you have you know times where you talk to your clients and so on and kind of just let them put them in check and say no like it's working like blah 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 mm -hmm. and i let them see other things like i think so many people look at the scale as the only determining factor, you mm. know, if it's weight loss or weight gain, whatever their goal is, they tend to focus on one outcome. But we know that the benefits to healthy eating and exercising is sleeping better, better moods, being able to handle emotions better, um, you know, lowered cholesterol, lower, like controlling your diabetes, mm. controlling your blood pressure, all of these things that it's not always about you know, the number on the scale, you know, how's your energy, you know, how do your clothes fit? A lot of times too, like the scale doesn't move, but if you're exercising regularly, you might, your body composition could be changing. So there's so many other factors and I usually go through that with my clients. And then we, I also like, I'm like, I also am like, well, okay. If, if there's not change, like Ooh. what should, could you be doing a little bit better? Um, because sometimes that's the case too, is that they, they think they're doing all the right things, but not always is that the case. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, so many people um, at my sort of work, the clientele that come in and so on, they're always on the scales. And I say, uh, fuck the scales off, you know, like, I don't, mm -hmm. why do you care about this? Like, 
how do you look you know because you can be uh 13 stone overweight or you can be 13 stone chiseled you know there's there's differences yeah. like it it's about how your clothes fit how you feel mentally you don't need to look at the scales and be like oh, i've put on two pounds because you know you may have put on two pounds and your top fits you better and you look a lot better so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's definitely one of those things that people need to eradicate from i think I've, to be honest i think scales should just be chucked out the window in my opinion it should be how we look at ourselves you know what i mean and perceive ourselves and how other people are seeing us and going yeah man you're looking good like well done you know not oh you've put on two pounds but you look good but you know you still put on two pounds so it's not good <laughs> so right like, it, it, yeah like, it's no amazing sense. to me that what i actually do so my my business is an online business but before i would do my online business I would have people in office and before they would get on the scale, I would have them weigh like kind of the end of the session because I wanted to hear from them first. How are you feeling? You know, how do you, all the other things and they're like booming, beaming with all this feeling so great and positive and they get on the scale and all of a sudden all that goes away. Yeah. And I do that intentionally so that they can see like, hold on a minute. Can you just repeat back to me what we were just saying? you know, right before you got onto the scale and then they start to realize, okay, you know, the scale is not everything. Yeah. I think it's uh, okay. like, we need, um, people need that visual like result. Do you know what I mean? Like I can see it, but necessarily, like you said, but like the lower cholesterol on that, you know, you don't, you can't see that unless you go and get your cholesterol done regularly. But yeah, I can guarantee you if like I had, um, someone's heart with arteries in it and I was like yeah this is you right now as you're eating like your arteries are getting clogged up and you're gonna have a heart attack uh, at some point you know because of your lifestyle and what you're eating um, and I'll show you this again in four weeks after you've had exercise eradicated the fatty foods and we'll show you I'll just pull your heart out and show your arteries and they'll look a lot clearer if you could show someone that they'd be like oh god like this is great <laughs> you know what I mean yeah but because sometimes we don't see that um, see what's going on on the inside we don't necessarily appreciate it or even think about it and take it into account. Yeah, it's a big part of it. I think you're right. It's, it's not visible. Mm. Um, so what barriers uh, do sort of people face when they're trying to make a change? Or like your clients, for example, they're trying to make a change. What barriers do they have to... I think there's a lot of barriers. Um, but the couple that come to mind are, I think, lack of support. So that's why it's really important to have to work with someone individually one on one. So that way, you know, I can kind of be their cheerleader because maybe their family doesn't understand the same values. Um, it's very challenging to be the only one making these changes and nobody really understanding why. And then your relationships with family members, spouses, friends, siblings, they change. And people don't like change and because you're changing, even though you're changing for the better, sometimes people don't necessarily jive with that. Yeah. And yeah. that's a huge barrier is people not realizing that their relationships with their family members and their friends might change and they have to be okay with that because they have to be confident that what they're doing they know is for them and it's going to be best for them in the long run. Um, so what I encourage a lot of people to do is I have a free healthy lifestyle support group on Facebook and anyone can join. It's, you know, I just encourage people to participate and it's a great network of people who are done doing the cr crash diets, done doing the fad diets. They genuinely just want to commit to healthier living and we just help each other to do that. So whether it's a Facebook group that you join or maybe, you know, you go to uh, gym classes, like they have group training classes, like boot camp style classes. Um, you know, that's going to be, I think, really important is if you don't have some sort of a support system, it's really challenging to kind of um, commit mm -hmm. as much as you'd like to. You have to be really confident in your decision yeah, to be able to do it on your own. I think that's, that's kind of um, the point is like you need – everyone i think needs someone to hold them accountable for their mistakes yeah. you know and it's like you're not doing you know you've you've made this mistake so look like come on sort it out like because you've done this this and this and this 
and don't mm. worry about what Moody Margaret says to you. Like that's just negativity. She doesn't like that you're changing. Like I'm the one that matters. I'm holding you accountable. You need to keep going. You know, bat yeah. away all that other stuff. And so, mm. I suppose that's the purpose of you know we have like business coaches, online coaches, personal yeah. trainers, and so yeah. on because we need that accountability. One hundred percent. I have a business coach and I have a dietitian as to help me with my nutrition. Hmm. Which is mad, isn't it? When we think you. Isn't that crazy? Like, I, I and I actually for a while I even battled with that myself. I'm like, I should be. Able, I know how to do it. I teach people. I've I've had hundreds of people have success and reach their goals, but I was like struggling myself because I'm. I was like constantly taking care of other people, and it made me realize, okay. You need someone holding you accountable because you're not serving your clients your best if you're not taking care of yourself your best. And it was honestly the best decision I've ever made. <laughs> like, like I believe in investing in yourself 150%. Yeah. And I think when you do that, you know, it's just, it's like a, once again, that cycle of positivity, it just like grows and grows and grows and it, it rewards you in the long run. Yeah, I mean, I had um, a guy on my podcast ages ago called James Boardman. He lives uh, quite locally to me, and he's all about sort of preaching that and that we need to be the best versions of ourselves yeah. kind of before we can then sort of benefit others around us. So it's all about, yeah. you know, he's like, you need someone to hold, hold you accountable. You need to be the best version of yourself. You know, get that work up done, workout done, plan your routines. Like, you know, it's not unfortunately like as much as people want life to be a bit willy-nilly is in like yeah i'll just do what i want when i want you know might go to work might not you know might eat good might not it doesn't work do you know what i mean in the long term you'll probably end up unhappy or moody or whatever you need to have like that structure that routine someone holding you accountable for your mistakes yeah. and also you know when you like you're bringing in a business coach and so on they're kind of showing you another avenue that you can go with or another possibility or a new you know fresh idea because we can all get so focused on this way is the only way and then yeah. someone else comes in and whispers in your ear maybe you should try this blah 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 and you're like good point let's go <laughs> you know it's it needs that. yeah it's, it's great to get other perspective and i also think coaches help you save time mm. you Massively. know like you think about all the time that you waste trying different methods of whatever goal you're trying to accomplish. But now you have someone that basically just like tells you like kind of gets rid of all the fluff in your brain and just says, no, this is what you're going to do. And they give you like my coaches give me actionable strategies. Like just like I give my clients every week. And if you're taking baby steps every single week, eventually you're going to make, you know, you're going to be got, you've gone real far if you're doing something consistently on a regular basis. No, I agree with you. It's, you know, one of those small steps, still moving forward. And once you achieve those little goals, it doesn't matter how small, you're giving yeah. yourself a pat on the back. That's what, you know, your coach is there for or that's what you're there for. Is So when they hit that mark, you can go, well done. Like, now on to the next one. Let's yeah. go. Rather that's than that, good. if you don't have, you know, I think if you don't have, like, maybe a, an online coach or any coach in your life, you can hit your goal and then it's quite easy to just sit back and relax and be like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm done now. I'm done. Mm -hmm. I've achieved it. Don't worry about the rest and then just start eating shit again or whatever. You know, so you, yeah. do, you, you have to have sort of some routines in your life and people to kind of hold you accountable, whether that's a partner or a monetary investment. And also I think if people do invest money into coaches and whatever, they're more likely to yes. follow through with it. That's one thing money, that my right? business coach has taught me because I think we all, in the beginning, when we first start a business, you kind of don't charge as much as you're worth because mm. you want to build up your clientele and all that. But I mean, listen, the people who pay more get better results because they're invested. Yeah. They, they want that change. They understand that you can't put a value or you can't put a price on value. And, at the end of the day, they just are are committed. And when you commit and you go, and like, so I think that's another thing that I want to kind of touch on is, so the all or nothing mindset versus going all into a healthy lifestyle are two different things, you know? So there's like, you have to be all into committing to a healthier version of you, but you don't have to 
eat perfectly and exercise perfectly for that to happen. Does mm. that make sense? Yeah, no, definitely. Because okay. I have it with clientele, you know, there's certain people I don't want to work with. And I know that's harsh, but that's just, I've got to worry about no. me. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, 100%. I'm not willing yeah. to waste my time like with you like you either pay me the fee this is what i'm worth these are the results that you're gonna get are you with me if you're i'm an in eh, whatever if you don't want to eh, whatever if you do let's go you know and then i understand that they're gonna make mistakes they're gonna have minor setbacks they might eat a little bar of chocolate they mm -hmm. might miss a gym session once you know because something came up whatever like that's fine but I right. know that they're committed. They they've invested in me, and I'm invested in them. And there's no questions. I mean, it's just that this is the path. Let's go. So yeah, yeah, I definitely get get what you mean. You know, hopefully other people do as well. They do if they're in the industry and they're running their own shit. <laughs> they definitely yeah. know, know what's going on. Um, how do you develop sort of? How would you sort of recommend for people to uh, develop healthier habits and sort of routines that could like help with success and moving forward with their lives it's a great question the first thing that i always have people do is track what they're eating and if you're paying attention and you're being mindful and aware of what you're consuming on a regular basis then we can look to making little swaps throughout your day so an example of that might be you know maybe this person's diet's absolutely terrible maybe they drink soda every day, eat sweets all the time, you know, barely eat any vegetables. Well, yes, we eventually want to change that. But for right now, I just want them and I have them tell me what they're ready to change because I can't force anyone to change anything. I ask them, what are you willing to swap out right now? And it doesn't mean that they can't drink soda. It just means that they're going to commit to drinking less soda and maybe try flavored seltzer instead as an alternative. You know, and we work on that habit and behavior until they're ready to make the next change. And it's really just taking your own diet and making it the best diet for you. It's not about following what Susie Joe's doing. It's not about following what you heard on social media or, you know, it's on the news. It's about looking at your own diet and making small little changes that are sustainable for you. Yeah, because chicken and rice seven days a week right. does does get fucking boring. Unless you're doing, like, and even if you are, there's even like you don't even have to do. But I was just saying, like, if you're gonna do like a bodybuilding competition or like a bikini competition, you know, maybe that's what you have to do temporarily. But as you know, the second you stop that, you know, you're never gonna look as good in, when you're competing as like, yeah. your every other day. Stop. That's what um, kind of touching on it. Um, that's what pisses me off about social media is these people that. Um, they have all these photos done when they're in like peak shape you know right. like let's get a hundred photos of me looking good and then they post them over a period of time on their instagrams and whatever and kind of lead people to believe that they're in this shape 365 days of the year yeah. maybe like two percent of them are but most of them they're probably a little bit you know out of shape or whatever because i don't think it's possible as a human unless you're an alien to maintain having that you know body competition it's also not time. healthy yeah like their body fat not. percentage is at an unhealthy rate uh, unhealthy place you know women at that with that low body fat percentage are not menstruating mm. it's not long-term sustainable the men at that at that with that low body fat like we need fat in our bodies we need yeah. the right portion of fat but you know that competition level it's not something that is healthy to stay at for a long term there's probably some dude like ripped to shreds ready to compete and he's listening to this and he's like those two are just jealous man they don't know what i'm going <laughs> they don't know what they're going on about look look at that guy with his beard and his fat cheeks <laughs> oh, <laughs> just me no like, i mean listen you. like it's like anything like and it's also the that's it's an athletes do crazy things to get results because to them, it's not about, you know, the result of winning or getting first place is more important. It's all just about, like, what are your values? And it's totally fine. Like, that's if that's part of the sport. A lot of times athletes do to perform at certain levels might have to be at a low body fat percentage to get them to where they want to go. But yeah. the problem is, is that it's not athletes who are following these athletes. 
It's your everyday average person looking up to these athletes, trying to achieve something that almost makes no sense in their lifestyle. Mm, You know, especially if you want to balance, say, like family and friends and going out to eat and, you know, just having like a regular normal routine, quote unquote normal routine, um, you know, it's probably not. If you're not making money doing it, I wouldn't do it. Yeah, basically. <laughs> if you're going to get compensated for exercising, you know, hours a day, like doing two a days and eating super clean and, you know, focusing fully on nutrition and exercising, you're going to get paid for it. Awesome. But if you're not, and this is just something that you think I'm just going to do because I want to aesthetically look a certain way, I probably would think about it a different way. So what's your view on sort of um, vegan diets? Because over the last sort of year and a half to two years, maybe it's kind of the vegan movement has blown mm-hmm. up. What's your take mm-hmm. on that? Do you think it's a sustainable long-term thing or? Well, that's the, that's the problem is that some people go vegan because they think it's like the only way to be healthy. Forgetting that the vegan, it's a veganism is a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle choice, and not everybody's doing it for health reasons. Some people are doing it for sustainability reasons or for um, ethical reasons. You know, there's so many different reasons why somebody goes vegan. So regardless, if if you're looking at it as a way to lose weight, it can be considered like a fad diet as well. Like it could be something that you do temporarily because you don't truly understand the reason or the vegan community. You know, because the vegan community is a community and it is a lifestyle choice. So it's dependent on the person's mindset of why they're going into it. And if they are going into it and they are going to live it for the long term, then they really need to pay attention to certain things in their diet that they could be missing to make sure that they're getting a well-balanced diet. Because, you know, not it's not that meat is bad for us. It's that the absence of meat creates the opportunity for things like nuts, beans, um, seeds, whole grains, like a lot more of your nutrient dense plant based food, which is really good for us. Um, but a lot of people like, could be playing into that all or nothing mindset once again, which I believe we need to have a balance in the way that we eat. Yeah. I mean, most, um, most vegans I've ever spoke to are so aggressive. I'm like, mm. man, you need some meat. Like, what are you doing? They're just like, you animal killer like pinging me loads of like fucking videos of animals being killed and cows being killed and or like i tried to get a vegan on my podcast to talk to him about his view on it and what's going on and he's just like you've got more chance of um donald trump marrying hillary clinton than you have of me coming on your podcast and i'm like okay now bro chill out i was just asking do you know what i mean yeah i actually should i could point you in the, the direction to someone who i had so I'm a podcaster and I have, I'm also a regular, I have my Tips with Tony podcast that I'm, I have the Gym Wits podcast that I'm a regular on where it's a trainer, I'm the dietitian, and then you have like our average Joe. And we had a really, really awesome person come on to talk about ethical veganism. And she as a vegan was like one of the very few that didn't, you know, isn't one of those like preachers down your throat because she knows that you don't get anywhere mm. with anyone to create change by pushing it down their throat. If anything, you're just going to get more resistance. Strange. You know, so I should have, I can, I'm going to put you in contact with her. Yeah. I'd, if I'd, you uh, want someone to come talk about the vegan diet. Yeah, no, I'd be interested. I'll, I'll get some questions right up for them. Um, so yeah, we'll ne- network me through after this. That'd be cool. Yeah, um, I will. Also, I just kind of wanted to know what your uh, view was on the effects of unnatural sugars on the body. So soda, like people say it's like a diet soda like just just uh normal or coke, you know. corn syrup. like yeah. what do you yeah when high, you high in sugar you know like, what's that like <clears throat> yeah just like soda and shit like that you know things that are not not necessarily good for you those those sugars bad sugars you know not like refined sugars that's the one i knew that there was refined a word for it yeah i couldn't remember it. <laughs> glad you got it refined sugar so like i encourage people to a lot of people will think that you know all carbs are bad and they should avoid carbohydrates and that's the magic solution to their health but incorporating carbohydrates is really really important so it's important to choose 
carbohydrates that are complex or high in fiber, their natural state. So fruit is a good example of that, you know, whole grain bread, um, things that don't have added refined sugar, aka added carbohydrates that spike blood sugars can put someone at risk for um, developing or, or, you know, contributing to their diabetes. Um, excessive amounts of refined sugars usually cause weight gain, cavities, um, mood disorders, uh, at high peaks of energy to low feelings of not having any energy. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, so yeah, excess sugar in the diet is not really necessary unless you're an athlete and you really need to get that quick fuel source and it's going to, you know, you're about to work out within 30 minutes. That's when you need refined sugars. Other than that, it can be in the diet, but we don't want to be having more than, and I don't know what your conversion rate is from the UK to the U S but usually upwards of 50 grams of added sugar is the maximum amount that we want to have on a daily basis. And although that sounds like a lot, really, if you think about a 20 ounce bottle of soda, I think it has like 57 grams of sugar. So you already maxed out that way. And then we think they, I think of things like sugary cereals or, you know, yogurts that are loaded with sugar, um, you know, occasional, like a little bit of candy. If you add all that up, it's really easy to kind of get that to that. So one thing I have people do is when they're tracking their intake, take a look and see, you know, where do I have added sugars coming in? And is there a way that I can slowly cut back? Because one thing about sugar is it's very addicting. Mm. And the more that we have it, the more that we want it. So it, we can't, it's really hard to go like cold turkey, no sugar at all. But like any change, we, you know, if you're used to drinking, you know, putting like four sugar, four teaspoons of sugar in your coffee, I might recommend to go into two sugars until you can tolerate that, then back to one and then maybe you know, drink your coffee black. <laughs> no, so. I mean, um, I've uh, been addicted to two different things that are really high in sugar in Red Bull and mm. Coca-Cola. Mm. And both of them, I just went teetotal on. Like, so I went a year, literally, it was so bad. I went a year, I was drinking like three Red Bulls a day. Fucking wow. so bad. I was just like, I was high on energy, so it was great, you know. But... but <laughs> When I come off it after a year, like a year, maybe two days short of a year or whatever, but when I come off it after about a year period, um, my mood levels were like, boom, down. I was having like headaches, I felt lethargic, mm -hmm. my muscles were like spasming and shit. I was like, what is going on? Like, I'm on my deathbed. <laughs> I'm thinking like, what is going on just from stopping Red Bull? And, and for me, like, that made me realise how much I needed to reduce the amount of sugar in my in my diet i was like this isn't good and yet people are consuming i mean three red balls a day is a little bit excessive but people will have you know monster red bull yeah i whatever. mean it's not that excessive like and that's another thing that i think is important is a lot of people say the term everything in moderation mm. but everyone's definition of moderation is different yeah. so for you three red bulls is a lot whereas you know, somebody else might be like, oh, three Red Bulls, you know, I drink six, yeah. you know, so we're a of moderation, I, <laughs> you know, so. I did that at a party, I had uh, seven Red Bulls because I didn't, I didn't drink alcohol. Oh, and, uh, sorry, you just show your facial expression. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, you, it's dangerous though because of the caffeine. Yeah, I drove home. And uh, I felt like I was in a Fast and Furious film. I was driving quite slow, but everything around me was like, oh and I thought, God. am I fucking, am I high or something? And my heart felt like it was going to come out my chest. I was like, it's oh my scary. God. It's scary. People with cardiac conditions have unfortunately passed away from yeah. having too much caffeine. Because the caffeine and the sugar together is not, not a good, a good idea. Yeah. And that's the same with, um, I mean, Coca like for anyone who wants to eradicate Red Bull, Coca-Cola, whatever from their diet my tip is this okay you may disagree obviously because teetotals probably not sustainable but in my opinion it works for me just eradicate it go count your days go two weeks and then if you want to have one have one and see how you see how it tastes because i'm this, telling so you it tastes like shit <laughs> yeah well that's well that's true so what usually but like i was saying earlier the less you have it the more the more it'll like taste super sweet once you go back to having it and you'll be like oh my gosh how did i ever tolerate this mm. 
But the only, like, and sometimes going cold turkey does work. But the only reason why I tell people it doesn't usually work is because it kind of goes back into that all or nothing mindset. And having one after not having any for two to three weeks then usually leads to another one. Yeah, that's true. So, but but not everyone. You unless, know. You're, unless you're gifted like me. Because <laughs> <laughs> I literally, I had... Um, secret. <laughs> yeah, I was in a hot tub and um, I got the Coca-Cola... I was like, I haven't had one of these for like three weeks. This is going to taste so good. I had a little swig of it and I was like, I just, had a, I just had a tea instead. I was just like, you know. That's good, yeah. And then I haven't gone back since. Like, I just, it's I also, I think, the mindset. Like, if you, the thing that people struggle with too is feeling deprived. Hmm. And then that deprivation period, they feel like, then when they have it, they like, can't control themselves. But if you've done it in a way where your mind's telling you, I'm not, I haven't been deprived of this. I've just chosen that I don't want to eat it or drink it. And now I'm having it. You're making that mental conscious effort that, okay, this is something that I'm going to have a little bit of because you made the decision in your head before that you're just going to have one. Mm. The problem usually is when people go into situations without thinking about it, without a decision in their mind and their mind's not kind of around the idea. Yeah. And then it's really hard to stick to whatever plan or no plan lack of thereof you know yeah. they had i just hate the um the fault of like being hooked on something like this coke or this red ball or this bit of food has got like it's nails in my, like i need to have one like because i was literally yeah. craving like i was craving a can of coca-cola i'd be like oh i'll just go up a shop and get one man it's gonna taste so good so refreshing i actually want one right now <laughs> <laughs> i might go get one now i'm joking but you know it's like that whole um those cravings and everything and after 10 minutes like even if i craved on after 10 minutes i just didn't want one i was just like what's the point you know what's the point yeah. i've gone this i've gone this long might as well not bother. well that's what i i usually tell people um like when it, if they're addicted to sweets one thing i recommendation i might make to them is to not have any in the house because mm. then you're going to be tempted to have it but if you're not able to say for example you have no sweets in the house but you've been craving ice cream and you just want to get ice cream if you have to tell yourself three times that you really want ice cream and you're willing to now go out and drive to the store after say you came home from work and you're like ready to go to bed and you're willing to go out and go get it go out and go get it but get yeah. yourself a small cup and eat it out and don't bring it back into you know don't get a gallon and then bring it back in because you're just going to keep eating it you know sometimes if we if we rely on our willpower to say no to things again and, and again and again, eventually we're not going to be able to resist that anymore. Yeah. So if it's something that's pressing on your mind and you've been craving something and you really just want to have it, go out, have it, have a small amount of it, but then be done with it. Wipe your hands of it and move on. I was going to say something then about, uh, it's kind of really off topic, but uh, <laughs> it's like people that sustain themselves from sex, you know? It's like keep telling yourself and relying on your willpower. Eventually, you're gonna you're gonna crack at some it's point. It's true. Right? So it's true. Every any time we deny something and but we actually want it, it's just gonna keep building. Yeah, and then before eventually you know, we're gonna it get into it. Screams out. Um, what sort of links are there between uh, mental health and diet? Like a lot. Do you know a lot. of many studies or anything that have? Yes, there's really. A, like awesome new like studies coming out showing a link between our gut health and mental health mm. which I think is not something people think of when we think of our gut health like our microbiome our stomach is our digestive process a lot of times we think of digestion and we think like you know eat probiotics like the good bugs that eat consume foods with good bacteria to restore our um our gut I'm trying to use like layman's terms so yeah that's great cool. um i want people to be able to understand so improving your gut we used to think was just helping with you know normal bowel movements even our immune system you know we've shown that if you take care of you know um the, if we eat foods that, that restore the good bacteria it'll help our immune system but new studies are continuously linking to it actually having a link to our the blood brain barrier and the inflammation process and everything and how all of that then correlates to our mental health. So it's really, really interesting. Um, so we know like the 
the little, like the, not, you don't even really need a study to prove it. We know that eating healthy and exercising, if you, if you follow most people who are committed to healthy living, they usually tend to have a more positive outlook on life. Yeah. And then there, there's just association and correlation between depression and anxiety and linked to not great eating habits and behaviors. And, um, you know, it tends to kind of fall into each other, but from a scientific standpoint, physiologically, they're studying that consuming more, um, probiotics actually can help with our mental health as well as foods with omega threes. So like fatty fishes, flax seeds, walnuts, stuff like that. Um, are actually showing that people tend to have, are, are like, tech can help actually treat mood disorders. It's but if you, if you have a mood disorder, you still, and you prescribe medication, you still want to continue with your medication. <laughs> I just want to make sure people yeah, know yeah. that. Yeah. It's right. usually a complementary alternative. And actually, a lot of my clients do struggle with anxiety, depression, or bipolar disorder. And we've worked together, and I work with their therapist to help them wean off of those medications because they've committed to healthier living. But if they had not committed to healthier living, then the, them getting off those meds, I don't think would have, would happened, have been yeah. a smart idea or a possible idea. Yeah, I mean, they say the gut's sort of the second brain, basically. Yeah. And it's uh, strange because obviously, well, it's not strange, but in like Western, uh, in like Africa and all those sorts of countries, they're all about you know high alkaline bodies low low acidity mm. and um taking different herbal remedies and you know mm. they all seem pretty happy dancing around the fires and shit <laughs> <laughs> with our xboxes and tvs you know so whatever but we, we could go into that maybe at another time because uh yeah we've, we've been on about an hour and I'm, I'm i'm hot wow yeah it goes quick doesn't it it did go very quick um, but yeah, that was great. Yeah, uh, advertise yourself and then we'll talk off camera anyway. So here's your two minutes, far away. Awesome. All right. If you were intrigued by anything that I had to say, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or YouTube, or listen to my podcast. It's called Tips with Tony, and that's Tony with an I. I am also on the Gym Wits podcast regularly, so it's the combo of fitness and nutrition. The Tips with Tony podcast, they're really quick simple things that you can do to apply everyday solutions um, to your everyday eating habits so that way you can sustain a healthy lifestyle for a, the long term and that's it <laughs> i'll put your um link tree um, oh thank you in the description of the video anyways i already put it in there but i'll just let you know i'll, I'll do it anyway so it's been done um okay. yeah thank you for coming on really appreciate it i'll Pleasure. talk to you off camera anyways and uh okay. i think i'm gonna have to get my fan on because i'm a bit hot but, i yeah. know i'm gonna put mine on too <laughs> yeah cheers for coming on i appreciate that